Red crumbing occurs when somebody strings you along. Now, as an individual with Asperger's syndrome, you probably have encountered this in the past. Somebody's just uh, in your life and they're out of your life and taking advantage of you for their own purposes. So we need to come to terms with what breadcrumbing is and how it affects you as a person with autism. So what is this? Well, the person who is breadcrumbing you tends to be number one. We've got seven points here. And then... At the very end of the video, uh, we're going to talk about an article that I found in Psychology Today that, that explains the devastating, emotionally devastating effects of breadcrumbing. So you're going to want to hang in until we get, uh, get to the very end. But uh, number one, the person who is breadcrumbing you tends to be unreliable and inconsistent, or at least that's the way they come across. So think of, uh, think of uh, the breadcrumber, this person in your life, as a little kid who has a toy box and he takes out a toy and he plays with it. Then he's done with it, so he throws it aside, takes out another toy, plays with it, done with it, throws it aside, and you are the toy. Is there a person in your life who treats you this way? Uh, you're there when they want to play around with you. But when they're done, you're gone as if you never existed. Um, you know, there's a difference. A toy is an inanimate object. You are a real person. You have emotions. And this is not the way you treat somebody. And if somebody is treating you like this, then you're being breadcrumb probably. Number two is they tend to be flippant. I don't like the word flippant. I don't know why. It just sounds weird. So whatever. But uh, flippant means, I like the definition, means lacking proper respect or seriousness. So the breadcrumber is somebody who is flippant. They just don't respect you. They don't take you seriously. And if you are a person who is autistic or you have Asperger's syndrome, I'm almost going to guarantee you've got these people in your life. They just don't take you seriously. Uh, what you need, what you desire, they could care less. What they care about is themselves. Maybe somebody else, but usually themselves, but you, nah, not at all. Number three is uh, what we call discarding and hoovering. By that, we simply mean there are people who are in your life, and when they're done with you, they just discard you. You know, sometimes permanently. They don't want to talk to you ever again. You just, you know, they, uh, they just go on. It's kind of like you use a tissue paper, you know. Uh, when was the last time you used a tissue paper? Have you thought about the tissue paper since? Probably not. I mean, I haven't. In fact, I can't even remember the last time I used a tissue paper. Well, that is how these people think of you. Like a tissue paper that is used and gone and they forgot about you. But there are other occasions where you're not a tissue paper. They just discard you for a while. They're going to bring you back in later. But because you're not an inanimate object. They can't just, uh, you know, grab you and bring you back in. They've got to hoover you. Where does that word come from? Well, hoover is a vacuum cleaner, right? Sucks things up. So, so the uh, narcissist, uh, so to speak, sucks up to you. That is called love bombing. They're trying to bring you back into their web so they can use you for whatever reason. So you have this cycle of discarding and hoovering. So to explain this better, uh, yesterday I got out my power washer and I cleaned my truck. Yeah, it was just that dirty. So, and there's parts of it still still need to be cleaned. Even after I power washed it, I need to scrub it some. But when I was done with the power washer, I put it back in the shed where it belongs. I'm not done with it, you know. I used it, I'm done with it, and back in the shed it goes. And next project, I need to power wash my house. When I'm ready for the power washer, I get it. So that is how this person treats you. When they want to use you, they go get you, and they use you. Let's be friends, let's be buddies, let's pal around. Okay, we're done. Put you back in the shed. Do you like to be treated like that? You know, I'm not a power washer. Um... I'm not uh, something that you get out of the pantry and use and then put back. I'm not a plate or dish or a silverware that you get out, dinner time, done, all right, put you back, forget about you. That's not the way we are to treat other people because people do have emotional responses. We're going to talk about that, as I mentioned earlier, as we get to the end. Number four is a person who is breadcrumbing you as a... Um, you as a person who is autistic or who has Asperger's syndrome, they expect you to be at their beck and call. Do you know someone like that? I mean, you know, there are people on purpose. I am at their beck and call. Whatever they need, I'm there for them. 
I'm talking about close family members. I'm perfectly okay with that because I understand they're not taking advantage of me. That uh, if they need something, I mean really need something, I want to be there for them. Now, when I was putting together my thoughts, you know, putting together my notes for this presentation, I was trying to think of a good example. And what I came up with was uh, a concierge. So if you ever stayed at a four-star, five-star hotel, there is this person. Uh, their full-time job is to take care of the guests, I guess, so they don't have to bother the manager or the other staff members. So they're called a concierge. And if you need something, that's the go-to person. That's the person you contact. And before you leave, you're expected to tip these people for their efforts. So uh, you're not a concierge, you know? And there are people in your life who may treat you like that. If they need something... They go get you and take advantage of you, but when they're done and you do whatever they want you to do, and they just forget about you. I guess all of us take advantage of people from time to time, and we shouldn't. At least we ought to say thank you or pay them or whatever. But uh, not so if uh, this is a person who is breadcrumbing you. Number five is you feel uncertain. So you may have somebody in your life and you're wondering, is this my friend or not? I mean, is this a love interest? Does this person care about me? We got a romance going on? I don't know. Because one minute they're acting like they're really interested and then they're gone. And then they're back. They're acting like they're interested and then they're gone again. And it's cyclical over and over again. And again, we are not inanimate objects to get put back in the shelf or put back in the shed or wherever. We are living, breathing human beings. We have brains that come along, uh, that come with a uh, limbic system. We have emotions, and it does wear on us, sometimes severely. Number six is you can feel like an afterthought. So uh, when someone is breadcrumbing you and it's a, a love relationship, you want this person to be committed to you, and you want to be committed to that person. But nobody else. I mean, you're committed to others, but not to the degree you're committed to this person, and that should be reciprocal. He or she should be committed to you, too, right? But that's not the way you feel. You feel like an afterthought, because is this or is this not a love relationship? You just don't know, because the person is on again, off again. It's like a flashing light, you know? Uh... But it's not predictable because you never know when it's going to flash. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever had a car like that, that uh, sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. It's unpredictable. You ever had a computer break down on you? But then, okay, now it's okay. Then it breaks down on you again. You just don't know. And it, it, it drives you nuts. Sometimes it makes you mad, right? Okay, that's uh, what a breadcrumber will do to you. Number seven is these people tend to be impulsive. They want immediate gratification. Uh, that is one of their characteristics. There are some people who uh, they can think maybe, I don't know, five days into the future, and beyond that, they're not paying attention. They're not really concerned about it. So the reason the breadcrumber does this to you is because they're not thinking, if I discard this person or don't make any contact with them, it could hurt them. They don't think about that. It could damage our relationship further down the road. They don't think about that because everything is based on their impulse. All right, this article that I found in uh, Psychology Today listed three things, three devastating effects of breadcrumbing. And number one is it triggers dependency behaviors. Now listen to this. Breadcrumbing employs reinforces that stimulate dependency behaviors. Suspensefully waiting for likes, random messages, praise, encouraging comments, flirtatious texts, and photos. The basic motivator of this behavior is the anticipation of reward. So you're expecting this person to be nice to you, but it doesn't come. And so you start getting a dependency on that the kindness, that nicenessness. Uh, number two is they talk about uh, helplessness. Breadcrumbing may cause a greater sense of helplessness than ghosting. Ghosting, by the way, is when somebody just breaks off a relationship and they're gone. Compared to ghosting, when the relationship suddenly and completely ends. Yeah, I just said that. Breadcrumbing lures the recipient into a long, extended, and continuous situation of being on standby, living with unpredictability and uncertainty while waiting for the breadcrumber to make a commitment, which never happens. And so you just feel adrift, you know, just feel helpless. 
Then third, the article talks about loneliness. Breadcrumbing, by comparison, prolongs and extends a lonely period of feeling left out and being excluded from the breadcrumber's social activities. I just wonder, can you identify with loneliness? Can you identify with being left out? If you have Asperger's syndrome, if you're autistic, I guarantee you, you know exactly what this uh, writer is talking about. The recipients of breadcrumbing in this study reported higher levels of loneliness on the UCLA loneliness scale. I did not know there was a UCLA loneliness scale, but apparently there is. And if somebody is in your life and they're breadcrumbing you, you know, they're in, they're out, they take advantage of you, then they're, they just ignore you altogether and it's cyclical. It goes over and over and over again. That stimulates, that causes loneliness, according to this article. Let's keep talking if you want to. We keep hanging out. Just to click one of those two rectangles on the screen and we keep on going. But if not, thanks for stopping by and talk to you all next time.